Hi Kawan, welcome to EDC Ready. Today we are looking at this guy. We have a full review of the Kershaw Launch 10. So this guy is coming out of an American company named Kershaw and I believe that this is one of their USA made knives right here. You can see there, KAI USA. Now KAI also owns a Zero Tolerance as well as Kershaw and we are going to do a full review. Now a couple of things before we begin. Uh, this knife was actually designed based off of legal constraints. So in certain states, I think California in America, I'm not so, yeah, I think so. They have a limitation of two inches for a, uh, for a, an automatic knife. And this is an automatic knife. To launch this guy, you have to press this button and then the blade just fires out. And it fires out very satisfyingly. It actually has a pretty strong kick. I've never held a Protect before, so I can't compare it to a Protect kick, but this is pretty darn good. I have had this like jump out of my hands before and I've had other people have this jump out of their hands before. But before we begin, let's go through these specs right here. We have here my little weighing scale right here. That's switched on. Okay, the weight of this guy is coming in at about 51. Can you see that? Yeah, 51 grams, which equates to about uh, 1.8 ounces. Now, let's have a look at the measurements. Uh, the most, well, the most valuable measurement is the blade length because that makes it legal in those states with a two inch knife loss for automatic knives. And it comes in just, depending on how you want to measure it, it's kind of a weird blade to measure. It comes in just under two inches, which makes it legal. And then a uh, blade thickness comes in at about 1.2, hold on, there we go. 1.3 inches on the website on blade issue it says 1.12 inches so here well my calipers are not exactly the most accurate calipers out there wow it's really jumping a lot okay hold on there we go there we go 1.12 inches sorry i was kind of holding it not straight now a couple of other uh, relevant things i want to measure let's measure the thickness of the knife knife here comes in at just over Make sure everything's set. Yeah, just under half an inch thick. Okay. And in terms of the length of the handle, it comes in at 3.17 inches. Now, last but not least, this kind of measurement, quite important, uh, especially to me when it comes to pocketability, comes in at just over one inch in terms of its width. So really minuscule knife and just to show you guys how minuscule this knife is, I'm going to do some size comparison. Here it is against a knife a lot of people have, the pair of three lightweight. And it's really small, the entire knife can almost fit inside the handle of the pair of three uh, lightweight itself. Definitely sh uh, shorter blade length as you can see here. And against another very popular knife, the Benchmade Bug Out. This is the one that has the broken uh, Omega Springs which I'm still waiting for the springs in return. Okay. So now, let's get into the full review of this knife, the Kershaw Launch 10. First of all, let's talk about the blade. Uh, the blade here, the steel is a 150, uh, CPM 154. Uh, that is a powder metallurgy steel, so a very good quality steel. It has pretty good uh, corrosion resistance. It's pretty decent in terms of toughness. It's pretty decent in terms of uh, edge retention. In my experience, uh, this blade steel is like the best average knife steel if that makes sense so everything that uh, every factor that you have in a knife steel this guy averages out in does averagely well in all those different factors so it's a good overall steel the blade shape this is uh, their hawk bill blade shape you can tell because well it has a hawk bill and this blade shape is fantastic a couple of reasons uh, number one this hawk bill means that you have a lot of control with this knife you just grip it like this you can even pinch up with it and then you can use your finger right here and then you have a lot of control over this tip. This tip gives it just a lot of control. You can do any kind of swivel cuts that you need. A lot of pull cuts you can do. You can even punch through with it. It's going to be very comfortable to use in hand. The ergonomics of the, of the, of the blade is also very comfortable. You have a nice dip right here. A nice smooth dip right here. This is very comfortable to use. You can choke up on it with your thumb. Your thumb has a very comfortable natural resting spot here. As I already mentioned, you have a nice pinch grip up here. This is, uh, we have a little switch up here, which is very nice, where your finger can can uh, can place right there. You can even, if you have long enough fingers, 
have a little pinch right up to sorry have your finger up right up to the top because you have a nice flat portion up here as well you can pinch right up to the top you have perfect control uh you have perfect control of the tip of the hawk bill right there you can swivel it you can pull it just a very very nice blade shape now there are a few headings with this blade shape first of which is uh sharpening is not going to be very easy you're going to have to use some kind of a rod based system or uh, I don't know if you have like rounded bench stones, but you would need something like that instead of a flat bench stone because you can't just push this through a flat bench stone. Another thing you gotta be wary about is that because of the thinness of this blade, okay, 1 point, uh, 0.12 inches is thinner than this guy. It's thinner than the pair of three lightweight, okay? Pair of three lightweight, much, much thicker. And it's ever so slightly thicker uh, than the Benchmade bug out uh, uh, stock right here. However, it comes down to an extremely, extremely thin edge. This is one of the sharpest knives I've ever had. It's as sharp or, uh, yeah, it's as sharp as my Civivi Rustic Jet, which has a hollow ground. And I think that's even a higher, uh, higher ground it has there and it's hollow. This guy comes to a very, very, very keen edge. In fact, it's, it's still sharp and I've used this uh, guy uh, quite a bit. So, but what that kind of gives is that it gives this very, very thin tip. I don't know if my phone will focus. It gives this very, very thin tip that you have here. Now, that is going to be great for penetrating stuff, but I have this paranoia that one day I'm going to cut through something or if I'm pushing through something, or I might just even drop it because, well, look, I already have dropped it, where I might just chip off the tip of that. And that tip is one of the best parts of this knife. You know, that pull cut is because of how sharp how pointy that tip is. So that's kind of like the bad thing about this, this knife. You got, it's not really a bad thing, you're gonna get a trade-off. You're gonna get an extremely comfortable, extremely ergonomic blade for this kind of hole, for this kind of grip, and also for this kind of grip. It is extremely slicey and it's extremely pointy. Great for penetrating into anything, plastic, paper, whatever. Great for pull cuts, but that trade-off is gonna be the fragility of the blade edge and then the blade tip. Okay, uh, we have a couple of, uh, just showing you guys the font we have here. We have some auto, Kershaw, like that. And then we have the uh, Kai uh, USA, KAI USA, and then CPM 154. Okay, now moving back a little bit. Now there is no, if you guys are subscribed to my channel, you, you guys know I do a bunch of uh, disassembly videos. There is no disassembly video of this guy because I could not take the knife apart. Like I couldn't, I couldn't undo this screw, I couldn't undo this screw, I couldn't undo, undo the pocket clip screw, I couldn't undo this screw. I think it is Loctited, like seriously Loctited because I could not remove it. Now the good thing about this is that it is a, um, it is an automatic knife. So you don't really need to do any kind of maintenance because it is always going to fire. You're always going to press this and it is always going to fire. But that lack of ability to remove the clip screws kind of makes it really gunky in, in there. I'm just going to show you guys right here. I don't know if you guys can see the amount of gunk that there is in that uh, in this pocket knife. Okay, let's uh, pull it back a little bit. All right. So as you can see here, a lot of lint has kind of gone in there. It's really gumming up with uh, a bunch of... Uh, oil or grease or whatever that it has in there. The good news is because uh, it's it's automatic, it will still always fire, but this is just something that kind of kind of irks me a little bit. I can't get in there to clean it. I can get in there with kind of like a really thin Q-tip and just like clean out the insides here just by rubbing it along. But yeah, just keep that in mind. Now, in terms of its uh, activation, or not activation, in terms of its deployment, it kicks hard. It kicks really hard. This guy has really... The first time I, I tried this guy, uh, it was with a, a, another knife guy here in Malaysia. His name is Bapats. I held his and he, he warned me before deploying it. He was like, hold tight and press fire. And I didn't understand it because I've never held an automatic knife before. Until that day, where I held tight and boom! And it kicks hard. Now, I had a few friends who were curious about this knife, so they tried firing it and it's their first time and these are not knife people. It will kick out of their hands and uh, I've had two people have this kick out of their hands. So, for the safety of your friends and for the safety of the knife, uh, if they are non-knife people, just launch it, put it on the table, have them pick it up. That's it. To close this knife, fairly simple. Pinch here and then push down. So that is something you gotta uh, be wary about. Okay, let's talk about the handle. Handle extremely comfortable. You have these nice curves here. 
you have these nice curves up here and even then it is not flat okay this is not flat piece of aluminium here you have all these uh, chamfering that you have right here so it's a little bit thick it is actually thicker than the Parathy lightweight definitely thicker than the bug out in terms of the scale design however all these chamfering on the sides here makes it very comfortable in the hand it almost feels like it it your fingers can wrap around it and it's very comfortable to use i've not used this for long hours uh, but the amount i've used it is really really comfortable to use now the coating here this is a gray something coating i'm not so sure i have unfortunately uh, accidentally dropped it down before you're gonna get some kind of like uh, some kind of dense right here because aluminium is not a very hard material so it is gonna dent uh, it, it is gonna dent up uh, if you ever drop it so just keep that in mind not that big of a deal but you know if you are the kind of guy that likes your knives looking pristine you're gonna wanna make sure you keep a hold of this guy now why it fell was because of the lightness as I showed you 51 grams that is about uh, 1.8 ounces it is so light that uh, it was in my pocket and then when I pulled out my phone or my wallet or something, I pulled something out of my pocket, this guy kind of just like followed along because of how light it was. I just didn't, this is like when I just recently got the knife and I didn't expect that that would happen and boop, it fell out and uh, yeah, it hit the ground, which is very unfortunate. Okay, now moving around, it has a non-free spinning pivot, uh, which I guess would be a good thing if I did take this knife apart, although I didn't, but that's nice. You have a nice uh, American flag right there because it is made in America. Kershaw likes to put the American flag on their knives. So a nice design touch right there. The clip. Now I have a lot of problems with this clip. First things, what I like about it, it is a mini deep carry pocket clip, which I do enjoy. It is about the same length as the bug out mini deep carry pocket clip. So it really hides the knife like all the way to all the way to tip right, all the way to the edge right there, which is very nice. However, you do have the clip screws that go up into the uh, pocket clip area right there. So that is going to eat up some space. So you're going to have to use this with slightly thinner jeans or whatever. Okay. Another thing I don't like about this is that in terms of tension, it's okay. But the ramp on it is very shallow. Yeah. The ramp on it is very shallow compared to the ramp on this guy, which has enough clearance. And compared to the ramp on this guy, this guy sweeps up a little bit more and uh, what else yeah compared to this guy this guy sweeps, sweeps up just a little bit more as well but this guy has just just the smallest amount of sweep up and sometimes it's just hard to get your finger under that to lift it up to push it into your pants now some people this is not going to be a problem some people well what some people like to do is that they just like to press this against the edge of their pocket and just shove it in i personally like to lift it up put it in and then release and then let it grip from there. Reason is, well, it's just to maintain the edges of my pockets a little bit better. So personally, what I would do, which I haven't done, is to bend this up a little bit. Unfortunately, I can't bend it up because I can't take the freaking uh, pocket clip screws off. So uh, just keep that in mind. It would do a lot better with uh, 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 something like this, something that either has less tension or something with a lot more ramp going up so I can get my fingers down in it. But once it's in your pocket, uh, the retention is strong it's not going to fall out unless you did what i did which is pulling up my phone and then like let's say uh yeah let's say this is my phone okay and my phone was under the knife so when i pulled out the phone it kind of pushed up the knife at the same time so as long as you're not pulling it out accidentally this is going to stay in your pocket pretty darn well uh this is so small that i actually carry it in my coin pocket which is very nice because i don't really uh it's short enough to be in my po coin pocket and i don't really yank things out of my coin pocket very often okay another thing i want to talk about is that you do have like this uh milled in backspacer where it's not a separate piece it's these two pieces uh of aluminium that have been uh, milled and then you just like squeeze it together another nice ergonomic touch right here is this piece right here this little um this little area right here and it's the same with the kershaw natrix uh the small one that i had it's a nice place for your pinky to go in. You are definitely only going to get a three finger hole here. And I have really small hands. I'm a size S for gloves. So you're going to have the pinky in the back. And then the pinky has a natural place to just land here. So that just kind of places, that places your pinky in a good position to do any kind of push cuts. Which is very nice. It does hold uh, itself in the hand really well. You do get a hot spot off of this pocket clip right here. Okay, it does kind of sit in a kind of an unnatural place and it kind of does create a hot spot right there. Uh, not the most uncomfortable thing 
In fact, I don't think it is that bad. I'm just comparing it with any other knife that I have right now. And um, I mean, yeah, it's, it's pretty okay. It's not the worst in terms of, uh, it's not the worst in terms of the hot spot there, but you are gonna feel it if you really bear down on it. But it is a small knife. You are not really gonna bear down on it. So in conclusion, what do I think? Do I love this knife? Yes, I love a lot of design elements about this knife. I love the hot build. Hot build is great. Ergonomics, extremely comfortable, very, sorry, extremely uh, utility friendly, extremely useful. You are gonna get a little hot spot back here. Unfortunately, there are a couple of things that kind of makes me not like this knife. The first of which is the ability to the not ability the disability to disassemble it. Secondly, it is this pocket clip right here. It's just like this this guy, this mini ramp that's not really a ramp that's not there, coupled with the tension of the clip right here, just makes it difficult for me to use it. I, I love it once it's out of the pocket, once it's in my hand, once it fires. Okay, once I'm using it, I love it, but the minute I need to shove this back into my pocket, that's when I do not like this knife. And that's kind of the main reason why I don't really carry this knife very often. The other reason being, uh, I'm a little bit worried about the, 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 the tip right there, this fragile tip right there. Okay, it's not that I do anything hard use, okay, I really don't use my knives that hard on a regular basis, or even much at all really. But just knowing that this might jump out of my hand someday, it might hit the ground like that, kind of irks me a little bit and uh yeah one thing i realized when carrying this knife is that i do enjoy knives that i can open one-handed and close one-handed such as this knife it's just a simple line lock open it and close it to close this one-handed it's kind of a little bit iffy for me i have to pinch it right here uh pinch it down there at, at the base of my thumb press this button and then squeeze it in and then this has two worries number one i worry that my fingers will just slip and then fire out my other worry is that as I'm doing this with one hand, you can see that my flash is there. And if it's at the wrong position, then the tip of the knife is going to go piercing through my flesh. So that's kind of just it. Uh, in conclusion, I love certain design elements about there, but this is not the most everyday friendly knife for me because of those reasons, because of, of the thin tip, because of the difficulty to uh, lift up this pocket clip, and because of the very finicky one hand use of this knife. Okay guys, hope you guys uh, like this video. You can check out the link down below. I have my Patreon account, my Instagram account. Uh, I have uh, links to uh, thomasools.com.my. They help out with the channel. Uh, they help send me stuff for, uh, to review as well. So uh, do support them as well. Okay, thank you very much and stay ready.